Hello and welcome to the webinar today. This is a, a question and answer webinar with Pronunciation Pro. So this is for all, all of our the students of Pronunciation Pro um, to come and get their questions answered and to be able to interact and, um, and just get some personalized attention um, through the course. So there's different levels um, in, the, in the program or different packages that allow you to get different levels of um, feedback. The basic package, um, whether you're in the basic monthly or the basic yearly, you can come to these webinars and get um, feedback here. In the plus package, you get to send in a recording to our trainers every week of the program, every week of the 12-week program, and get um, personalized feedback from our trainers that way. And then our premier package um, includes one-on-one -on -one live training um, through video conferencing. So there's a lot of ways to, to get feedback, and, and feedback really is an important piece to this program. Um, so that you can know, okay, am I doing this right? Are we able to, you know, am I doing it right? Um, do I need to practice more? Um, am I carrying that over into my conversation, conversational speech? What areas do I need to improve on? Um, so there's a lot of a lot of ways to get feedback. So if you have any questions about that, just email me of just how to how to get. Um, you know, more involved and more feedback because we have a number of ways through the Pronunciation Pro course. All right, so today is November 2nd and we are, um, we're going to be talking a lot about linking and connecting words together. Those are kind of the questions that have been coming in more so lately. So we're going to be doing more of that and, then I, and we're going to open it up to questions from our students so that are here on the webinar today. Um, so be ready for that. Um, but first, I want to something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is just the importance of understanding the rules of English pronunciation and fluency. Now, a lot of people come to me, you know, saying, "Okay, I need to work on my accent. What do I need to do about my accent?" And when uh, in an accent is a carryover from the sounds and rhythm of your first language to your second language, so the process of learning the American accent or, you know, American English um, pronunciation and the American English accent is really focusing in on what are the rules of the sounds of English, pronouncing the sounds of English correctly and um, using the rhythm of English correctly. And there are rules that go along with this. Um, something that I think that is unique to the Pronunciation Pro course um, is that because I am a, a speech language pathologist, so my background is in speech language pathology. It's different than someone who is coming about it in um, with with an English, you know, an English as a second language learner background. Um, so there's a lot of teachers out there that are English teacher teachers, <clears throat> and then they kind of teach pronunciation as well. Um, so there's you know there's some good there, but um, but I think the advantage to what my program offers is that we concentrate just on pronunciation. There's a, and, and we use scientific, research-based, evidence-based uh, methods that will help you really learn, the lear learn and use the rules of pronunciation and be able to apply those to your, um, to your daily speaking situations. So there's a very much a step-by-step -step process that we use. And for those of you who are in the program and going through, you see that each week we build on each other. And I, I like you to go into that specific order because there is a methodology there that's important um, to really understand and to build on. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about here. And um, one thing that when talking about the rules of pronunciation, one thing that's important to understand, and this is something that I that I understood that, uh, or I learned when I was doing some photography classes. So I have a hobby in photography. And when I was doing photography a number of years ago, taking some classes and things, um, something that the instructor, instructor told me was that um, we have to learn the rules of photography. We have to learn the rules um, of art and composition 
and how to how to really use the camera and the settings um, uh, and really master those rules. Once you master the rules, then you can start breaking the rules. <laughs> um, and so and so it's important to first learn the rules before you can start really kind of manipulating those rules and adjusting because you see these artists and you think okay well they're not following the, the rules of composition and things well they've gotten to the point where they understand they they know the rules enough to know how to adjust them in a way that can work for them so as I'm applying that same idea to pronunciation I realized okay it's an incredibly important thing, and I've seen this with a lot of my students. It's so important to first learn the rules, really understand the rules of American English pronunciation and fluency, um, because once you under the, understand the rules, then you can start kind of being creative about the way you use the rules. Okay? Um, one example, I'm working with a client right now who's from the Philippines, and has a very strong habit of dropping ending sounds. So we're just getting started with the program and he, he consistently is dropping S endings, D endings, T endings, you know, a lot of these um, very important ending sounds to English words. Um, and so we've talked about the importance of ending sounds, getting our mouth into place, things like that. And as we've been practicing, he's doing a great job getting those ending sounds in there. Now the question that always comes up when we're talking about getting ending sounds in is that I always give a big focus and making sure, okay, we have to have those ending sounds, but I always get the question, well, a lot of native speakers don't pronounce the ending sound on words. Um, and that's true. There are some situations where native speakers will, you know, might drop the ending sounds. So I come back to this idea that first we have to understand the rules. We have to get those ending sounds in there because ending sounds are an important part of your overall English pronunciation and fluency. Once you understand and can get your mouth in position and have that as a strong habit, then you can start working on some common reductions and can some kind of th these linking ideas that happen. Um, but until you're very consistent in getting those ending sounds, and a lot of you are in different levels of this, um, sometimes, you know, ending sounds might not be a big deal for you. You're, you're usually getting them. So you can start kind of playing with that idea of, you know, um, sharing and sharing the, the ending sound with the next word and things like that. But until you have a habit of making sure your mouth gets in position for the ending sounds, then I don't want you to drop a, a, an ending sound, even if a native speaker tends to do it. Okay, so this is that general idea. First, let's lear learn the rules. Let's really understand how English pronunciation works. And then we can start kind of being creative about how we use it. All right? So I'm a little bit of a stickler about the rules and making sure that we have, you have the skills necessary to be very price, precise and very, very um, exact in your pronunciation, and very clear because our first goal making sure that is making sure that you are nice and clear in your pronunciation so that that communication can flow freely and there's no communication breakdowns um, uh, because of your accent or pronunciation. Um, and then once we're kind of at that level and some of my students who have kind of gone through the whole program, gone through the alumni course, are doing some of our alumni programs They've gotten to the point where we're like, okay, well, let's loosen it up a little bit. Let's get a little bit more um, creative with our with our speech. Then they're able to kind of incorporate some of these um, reductions and and things that native speakers do. All right, so that's my my little two piece, uh, you know, my few minute speech on the rules. Is let's really concentrate on the rules, learn the rules, and then later on we can kind of get get creative with the rules. All right. Okay, so um, for those of you who have not um, been to any of these webinars before and is, are new, um, I, my name is Annie Rudin. And I, I, I'm the one in all of the videos, <laughs> as you can see by my video. The, I think the webcam's going. But uh, these are my little guys 
this is Andrew, Jimmy, and Luke. We just had Halloween here this last week or on Monday, and um, and I actually am wondering how many um, of you from your native country celebrate something similar to Halloween. Um, I was talking to someone in Australia yesterday um, that they celebrate Halloween there. Um, I know there's the Day of the Dead for some of our um, Latin American students. Uh, but I, I was just curious. I'm, I've never really asked about the, a Halloween. And Halloween is basically just kind of a holiday of uh, dressing up in costumes, going around, gathering candy <laughs> from neighbors. Basically, they go door to door and ring the doorbell and say trick or treat. And people give them candy in their little buckets there. Um, so it's kind of a strange holiday. I, you know, I don't know the origins exactly, but I was kind of curious how many of you have something similar in your native country. Um, so in the questions box, just kind of write, yes, we have something, or no, we don't have anything like that. Um, so yeah, that questions box is how we're going to uh, do that. So it sounds like in Brazil you have something like that. Wagner, I'm going to actually unmute you. Wagner, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Welcome Hi. from Brazil. <laughs> Hi. Um, so you guys have some kind of a holiday like Halloween? Yes, we have. What do you um, call it? And in my in my apartment, for example, where I live, in, uh, children come for uh, to our home, our house, and ask for a candy or treat, treat or or treat. It's very cool. Oh, okay, so it's kind of that same trick or treat kind of idea, right? Yes, yes. Okay, fun. Okay, and do you, what do you call it? What's the name of the holiday, in in Sorry? Portuguese? What, what's the name of the holiday in Portuguese? Like, what is it referred to as? No, we call Halloween as the uh, USA. Okay. All right, fun. Okay, thanks, Wagner. Um, all right, and it sounds like some of the others don't have anything kind of similar to that. So I figured it was something, I don't know how it got started, but it's a big, it's kind of a big holiday here in, in the United States. Um, I see it as more just a fun way for the kids to dress up, <laughs> and uh, who, what, what child doesn't want a big old bag of candy? Um, anyway, okay, so just kind of back to a little bit about me. These are my kids. Uh, I've been doing pronunciation training for uh, as long as this guy has been alive, about eight or nine years, um, and before that I was doing more uh, in, uh, more just uh, articulation training, which which leads into it. Um, so, with that said, let's go ahead um, and jump into some of our questions. Okay, so this is from Anna, and actually, I'm going to move forward, and we'll come back to these. But a cache, a cat, a cache. Let's see. Akash, you there? Yes. Hello, welcome. Hi. All right, so you had emailed me about a question about linking, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're wondering about kind of the vowel to vowel linking um, lesson, which is in week seven. And you were asking kind of how to move from the first vowel to the second vowel, the second right? Yeah, yeah, where you have a little bit of that glide. Yeah, and that's a great question. So I am going to, I have my workbook here. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the workbook um, so I can show you what, what that concept is and kind of how to incorporate it. So one thing that I want to mention with linking, the, the general idea is basically, let's just, let, how, do we, how can we move fluidly from one word to the next, okay? And you might be doing that just fine without having to really break it down so much. But for those who are really struggling to kind of make that link, um, this is, this is, these are the rules that are attached to it. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead. I want to hear you say, my uncle is too angry. 
Okay. Uh, my uncle is too angry. Okay. So you're already naturally doing kind of this glide that we're talking about. But basically, okay. the, uh, for, and I'll, I'll have you do a few more and um, kind of get, get a little bit more of an idea here how, how you're doing. But um, first to review the rule. So in vowel-to-vowel -vowel connections, whenever one word ends in a vowel and the next word begins with a vowel, what happens is your mouth kind of sometimes needs to use a W sound or a Y, so a W sound or a Y sound in between to kind of move from one position to the next. So a lot of times what happens is if the first vowel is set in the front of the mouth, um, and let's see, if your first vowel, too angry. So let's take this example, ooh, is in the first the front of the mouth, ooh, a is kind of more back. Okay. So to get from the front to the back, a lot of times we get do more of a w sound, too angry. It's almost like we jump off that w to get back in the back of our throat <laughs> to the next vowel. Okay, and then the opposite is true. When the first vowel is in the back of the throat, a lot of times we kind of jump jump from the back to the front by using a y sound. So my uncle, and this, you know, y kind of has the y sound anyway. My uncle, my uncle is too angry. So if you really slow it down, you're able to hear the w and the y sounds in there. Um, but in connected speech, you don't necessarily hear that very clearly. So a lot of times what I'm hearing from my students is too angry. There's kind of a break in there. Too angry. Too okay. angry. And if like, that... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the thing is that I'm getting confused uh, when to use W or Y sound, like the Y glide. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's first, what I want to make sure, so if the, if the sound is more in the front, so ooh, uh, ooh. let's see, ooh, it, so, let's see, too angry, where are some of these, uh, ooh, in number four we have more of the ooh sound, su, o, o, so when you say it, do a vowel sound and it's kind of more in the front of your mouth, okay, to, it's more of the oohs and the o's, oohs, o's, Oh, uh, you know, ow, ow, kind of those. Everything else is kind of more back here. Um, so that's the only time you're using those W sounds, when you're going from the front to the back in some of these vowels. Now, what I don't want is for you to overthink something that you probably are doing correctly anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so that's the trick that we have to get into is if you find that your your speech is choppy, like if you get feedback of just saying, "Oh, you're breaking apart words," and you're just and it's more it's more the Asian languages that tend to do that that there's a little bit more of a break in between sounds, um, okay. then then the linking is really important to kind of get that feel of like how can I move from one to the next without breaking. But if you're not having that problem, then this is probably happening naturally for you anyway. Okay? okay. So let's go uh, ahead. Yeah, even I, even yeah, I think that I don't have any problem in this one. Like, okay. if I practice a lot, I'll get over with this. Yes. Yeah, and so when I'm hearing you talk, it's more, you know, you have a flow to your speech where it's one sound connecting to the other. Um, making sure your mouth is in the right position for all of those sounds that you're saying, that's, you know, that's another thing. But transitioning from one sound to the next, I don't think is a problem for you. Okay. Okay. And that fluency, and for, you know, for all of those who are working on getting just that fluid movement from one word to the next, it's all about linking, making sure that that connection is nice and smooth. Because as you go up in your intonation and come down in, in, in your intonation, that all has to be connected with that linking, okay? Okay, yeah. All right, so let me hear some of these other sentences for me. For, uh, I want to hear them from you. All right, so go do number two for me. Okay, he ate the apple. Mm-hmm, he ate the apple, good. Number three? 
Uh, the older boy is strong. Mm -hmm. Number four. I always see you in the elevator. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of a break there, but it's an appropriate break. So I always see you in the elevator. In the elevator. So you can make it even connect even more. Um, but I think a lot of times, have you been working on the TH sound? Yes, I am. But yeah. it's, it's, it's because of the lingual braces. It's sometimes, dif sometimes oh, yeah. difficult. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I get yeah. Uh, what my kid is, so it's some, sometimes difficult for me. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember talking about the braces and <laughs> things like that. Okay. So um, for the and that might be why you kind of broke there in between. Yeah, the in that's why the, I, have to make it, I have to be very conscious about it. Yes, and that that happens <laughs> so at first. So. Yeah, and that's fine. I'd rather you get kind of have a little bit of a break there and get your mouth in position than saying the sound incorrectly because that. Oh, yeah. Um, you I'm know, just doing my best on this one. <laughs> yeah, um, I like that. But even in your in your um, conversational speech, as you've been talking to me, you're getting that th in position. So that's great. Yeah. I'm I'm hearing that um, really well. All right, number five. Uh, Sue is very outgoing girl. Mm -hmm. So get that. Uh, Sue is a very outgoing girl. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Good. Okay, number six. Go inside before you overheat. Mm -hmm. Good. Next one. She went to Africa on vacation. Excellent. Nice flow to it. And number eight. We are happy on sunny afternoons. Mm -hmm. Number nine. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Good. And number 10? Be intelligent when you open the lecture. Wow. You're sounding great. You're sounding <laughs> really good. Yeah, and just even Thank with you. all the battles and all the other the other sounds that are going through. So I'm really happy with where you're at. Are you, so you're on week 7 in the program? Yes. Okay. Yes. You're doing great because I remember <laughs> you were very concerned at the beginning kind of how, yeah. <laughs> how this is all going to go with bra having braces and things like that. So nice. Okay, you should be really happy with that. So, yeah, keep up the work, good work, and let me know if you have more questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Thank okay. you. Uh huh. All right. Um, does anybody else want to try this? Um. Okay, now Jen, I'm gonna go ahead and open. Now Jen, you there? Yes. I'm Hello. Here. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> All right, so it sounds like you want to try, and let me just read your question. Oh, okay, so you're just kind of asking, yeah, so um, let me just read your question real quick. Nigen, it says, um, is the vowel the vowel linking popular that we should pay attention to, to this to sound more natural? Should we practice linking every vowel to vowel while reading and speaking? Is this linking rule as strong as the rule of ED past tense that has the t, t and id? Okay, so this is what's important about the linking rule is just making sure that, that we're flowing from one word to the next. Because if we talk and it's broken up, too much, there's a halt in how we sound, right? Okay, so so if I were to speak with some of these breaks, it just it doesn't flow, it doesn't connect, it doesn't sound, it doesn't get that fluency like we want. And the core of that is linking, okay? Linking is, uh, you know, very important. So when it comes to the rules of linking, it basically just means, okay, we have three different combinations. We have consonant to vowel, we have vowel to vowel, and we have consonant to consonant. So these three different ways that we could possibly be linking the ending of one sound to the beginning of the next. It's not much different than linking between, you know, linking between sounds within a word. Okay, so within words, we're always linking sounds. You know, we're linking, like for example, in this in this in this sentence, we're linking the e to the n. That's a vowel to consonant. We're li linking the N to the K, you know, that's consonant to consonant. Okay, so we're doing it constantly within words, and we just have to make sure that we're doing it between words, too, to make sure that that, that connection is nice and fluid. Okay? 
Um, so let's have you try. Do you want to do, do you have a particular either constant to val, val to val, or constant to constant you want to try? No. Anything okay. Is good. Okay, let's do val to val. Okay, so let me hear, oop, let me get here. Go ahead and uh, number one here. Okay. My young goal is to wangly. Mm -hmm. So do it just, uh, yeah, do it kind of at a natural speed. Don't look at the transcriptions there okay. uh, over here. Look okay. at it more here. I want to just, I want to get an idea of how you, how you naturally are going to say it. And then. Okay. Um, yeah, if I say naturally, I, I won't remember this rule though. But let's okay, see. Okay, that's fine. I want to kind of get an idea of where your baseline is, yeah. He ate the apple. The apple, okay. Go to the next one. The older boy is strong. Mm-hmm. Next one. I always see you in the elevator. Good. Okay, next one. Sue is very outgoing girl. Mm-hmm. Okay, so don't forget that A the the A there. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Okay. And uh, go inside before you overheat. Okay, I'm gonna have you do this one again and make sure you get the uh in there. Oh, okay. Sue is a very outgoing girl. She is a very outgoing girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the only say the only kind of disconnect, very outgoing. Do that one and kind of move move between those. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Sue is a very go outgoing girl. So do that one again. Very outgoing. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Mm -hmm. So that's the that would be the only one that I would say. Oh, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Very out, very out, very out. There you go. Very out. Okay. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do the next one. Go inside before you go over hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next one. She went to Africa on vacation. Mm-hmm. Next one. We are happy on sunny afternoons. Okay, next one, yep. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Mm -hmm, sorry, I kind of interrupted you. So do number nine again. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Good, number ten. Be intelligent when you open the lecture. Mm -hmm, good. Okay, so here's here's my take on this. Don't worry too much about all of the rules. <laughs> um, I want you to have the focus be, okay, don't be thinking, oh, when should I do the W or when should I do the Y? Be thinking, okay, how can I just connect it? How can I just make sure that it goes from one sound to the next and there's no break there? Because I think you're naturally, you're naturally kind of getting that idea um, and I don't want you to overthink it and get confused. Um, so moving from one sound to the next, just think, okay, how would I do it in the middle of a word? And, you know, so let's do the same thing between words. Before you overheat, so there was only, oh, very outgoing, very outgoing. So just maybe um, uh, breaking it down. If you kind of, you know, feel a little bit of halt or you had to stop or pause or anything between, then just, just break it down and say, okay, I'm just going to say very out, very out, very out. A few times and your mouth will get comfortable with that transition, and then you can start again and do it, okay? Okay. So I think you're getting it, and, and what's, what I like hearing is that as you're concentrating on, on flowing from one to the next, your intonation sounds great, okay? So as you were doing it, you, you know, I ended the meeting at quarter to one. So you had that up and down intonation pattern that was perfect. That was exactly what I wanted to hear with your rhythm. So concentrating on connections and linking and just making sure it flows one word to the next, I think is going to naturally give you more of that natural intonation. Okay? Thank you. Okay, good. Very nice, Ajin. Okay. All right. Does anybody else want to try this? If there's like a hand raise icon that you can do. Okay. I'm going to uh, do uh, do just. I'm yeah. Hi. 
Hi, let me, so what was your name again? Tell Dieu juste. Dieu juste, okay, Dieu juste. Dieu juste, yeah. Okay, and I, I'm probably not going to pronounce it perfectly because there's some sounds in there, there's some vowel sounds in there that are not in my English repertoire. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's a French name. That's um, why. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, well, good. Do you want to try this? Uh, that yes, I want to. Did you have hand for or did you have another question? Yeah, I have another question, but okay. I, I'm not sure that I have a problem with those, but I can try, by the way. Okay, well, what's your other question? Okay, it's still about, like, linking. Uh, let's uh, say, like, uh, home early, like, uh, go home early. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know, like, uh, home ends by E, early start by E. So mm -hmm. I want to know how I can link like home and early. Okay. I need to go home early. early. Okay. Yeah. Home early. Okay. So one thing that we have to think about is, is it, is it the way it's spelled or way it sounds? So home early actually ends in an home. Mm, it has the e at the end as far as the spelling. But as far as how it sounds, it ends in an M sound, homerly. So you're actually linking a, a, a consonant to a vowel. Okay. Okay, so if I'm going to do it in kind of the Rudin phonetic here, homerly, homerly. So I need to go home or homerly, homerly. 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 Yeah. Okay, thank so you. So do it all connected. So I need to go home early. I need to go home early. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so you have to really kind of think, okay, is it the, and it can get confusing when there's, it's spelled with a vowel at the end, but really it's actually a consonant sound at the end. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes okay. sense. And uh, right. the other one, it's like, let's say, I heard some American people say, don't eat. I want to say some donate. Like they just drop the T and they just connect the and and it and eat. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah. Donate. Uh, yeah. Okay, don't eat. Yeah, don't eat. There's yeah, don't eat. Okay, so that's part of one of those things that we were talking about in the beginning is that um, native speakers they have gotten into the habit of dropping some sounds occasionally. <laughs> The T on don't is, uh, is one of those, okay? So, but we, what we don't want, don't want, see, I even do it. Um, we don't want is for you to say don't want, don't want. So there's, there's a difference between I don't or don't need or don't want. Uh -huh. And don't want, don't want. So what's happening here is we're we're getting our mouth in position for the T, but we're not releasing it. And so that's why I say learn the rules first before you drop it. Is because I'll hear uh, I'll hear kind of don don with an ending on n uh -huh. instead of don't don't eat don't eat. So there's kind of like the T comes over here, don't eat, oh, don't want, don't want, don't want. I don't know if you can hear that very subtle, like your mouth is in position for the T, but you just don't release it. Don't eat, don't, don't eat. Don't eat, don't eat. Yeah. So there is, there is definitely that element of the T's and sometimes the D's get dropped, but when it comes to making sure that we're nice and clear, then I always say, oh, just get it in, you know, get it in there if you're having, a, if people are having a hard time understanding you when you say that, be mm -hmm. sure to get that ending sound in there, okay? okay. okay. So the, another, another example that kind of gets in there, and we have a lesson on this, is the can and can't, mm -hmm. can and can't. So the, the difference here, I can't wait, like if I say, I can't wait, I can't wait, you don't necessarily hear a very clear T sound on there, mm -hmm. but if I don't do 
get my mouth in position for the T sound, then it's going to sound like can. And so then there will be that confusion, well, you can or you can't, right? <laughs> well, can, can you or can't you? Um, so in these kind of situations, I always say just get that T in there um, and stress that word can't, and it will clear up any confusion. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. <laughs> okay. And also my other question is about like T plus Y, like uh, don't you? I know a little bit the wall, but uh, it's always my biggest concern is like uh, S and Y, like a bless you, bless you. I don't so I always have problem with that. Okay. Sometimes I heard people said bless you. Sometimes I heard people said bless you. Yeah. So bless you, bless you. Um, I hear that sometimes, but it's a little s sloppy to me, I guess, um, when I hear it because it has more of like it's it's almost like a, they're. Oh, it's almost like you're getting that bless you, bless you, um, and it sounds oh, to me it sounds incorrect instead of having that very pure S sound, bless you, bless you, bless you, um, I would prefer to have that S sound in there, and that sounds a lot more crisp, a lot more sharp, and a lot more common, I would say, is bless you. You know, okay. someone someone sneezes, oh, bless you. Okay. Yeah, that would be how I would do it. But don't you, don't you, won't you, can't you, that's a very real thing. You know, having that ch ch sound uh -huh. there in that, and I think we get, you know, as we get further along, I, I go into those more into the alumni course where we talk about all those common reductions. Um, uh, but again, like I say, I, I always focus on the rules first, and then we kind of move into the the exceptions and the you know common reductions and things that make it sound a little bit more. Um, you know, na native, natural and native, whereas our first focus is let's make sure we're precise in our mouth, mouth movement and that you're clearing up any kind of uh, mispronunciations or inaccuracies, and then we can kind of play around with some of these, you know, common reductions. All right? All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Let's see, Vazantha. Hi, Annie. Hello. Did you want to try the linking, Hello. or what were do you think? What were you? Uh... Yeah, yes. linking. Okay, good. All right, let's move in here. Okay, let me hear some of these. Do you want to do vowel to vowel or uh, vowel to vowel? Okay. Go ahead. With my uncle is too angry. Uh... Uh, my uncle is too angry. Mm -hmm. okay, my so uncle is too angry. Good. So that second time you kind of got that connection a little bit more where there was a little bit of a break in between uh, the first time. So do the next one. He ate the apple. He ate the apple. Okay, so I'm he hearing a little, a little bit of a he break, ate. so try and connect it a little bit more. He ate the apple. There you go. Next one, number three. The older boy is strong. Okay, a little bit more connection between the older. The older boy is strong. There, much better. Number four. I always see you. I always see you in the elevator. Good. Okay, number five. Sue is a very outgoing girl. Good. I like the flow. Good. Number six. Go inside before you overheat. Yes. Good. Number seven. She went to Africa on vacation. Mm -hmm. Number eight. We are happy on sunny afternoons. Good. Number nine. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Okay, do that one again and let's get a little bit more flow. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Okay, so a little bit of a break there in between the first and the second part of the word, but I think that, that could work. So I ended the meeting at quarter to one. I ended the meeting at quarter to one. Yes, okay, so nice flow between there. And number 10? Be intelligent when you are open the lecture. 
Mm -hmm. So do that one more time. Be intelligent when you open the lecture. Be intelligent when you open the lecture. Okay, a little bit more flow to it. Do it one more time. Be intelligent when you open the lecture. Good. Okay, so there's kind of, sometimes there's, there's a, a little bit of like holding the sounds, you know, as you're moving from one word to the next. Because you can, you can kind of play on that. I ended the meeting at quarter to one, you know. Sometimes you kind of hold on to the, the words, and you'll see that with native speakers, is they'll, they'll kind of hold on to words a little bit as they're connecting. Um, and that's totally, that's completely fine, is to kind of get that, um, that hold in order to connect. So what I loved about that, I was awesome, Vazantha, just like um, we were hear hearing from another student here today, is that as you concentrated on that linking, your whole rhythm got better. Okay, so that whole rhythm of the sentence improved. And it was just because you connected, you know, you were working on that linking, you were focused on that linking. So that's the key, I think, and I go into this in the alumni course, is that's the key to English rhythm is that as you focus on that linking and you understand that there is that flow of stressed and unstressed syllables and words, that as you concentrate on linking, it seems to kind of be that secret of getting the rhythm really nice and clear and flowing well. Okay? So for okay. you, really concentrating on that linking as you're reading out loud um, will do a lot in helping your rhythm. Okay. Okay? And your, your, your sounds are coming along. What, what week of the program are you working on right now? Uh, it's the seventh. Seventh, yeah. So I can tell uh, there's kind of this point in a lot of our students in, six, in weeks six and seven where the sounds are, are really getting into place very well and, you know, especially in the reading. It might not be in conversation completely yet, but in reading you're able to get your mouth in position and you're really getting that rhythm figured out. And so the more you practice that and you're reading out loud, the more that will move into your conversational speech as well. Have you seen that a little bit, that as you're yeah, reading, yeah. that yeah. you're able to get your mouth in position? Yeah. yeah, yes, I'm improving. Okay, and then in conversation, how are you feeling about uh, it? Yeah, it's better. It's better, okay. So, okay. so yeah, as you continue to do the reading yeah, practice, uh, at the same time, uh, no, focusing on the uh, mouth position and linking, intonation, all these things at one time, uh, I'm able to concentrate on one thing and I'm forgetting the other thing. That, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yes, and at this point, because the first six and seven weeks, the first seven weeks, I'm overloading you with a lot of stuff. <laughs> And then you'll see in weeks 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, we're just practicing and reviewing everything that you've learned so that it can, you know, I, I'm, in, you know, reminding you of things and you're, week by week, you're really remembering and practicing those, those areas that you've learned. But the first seven weeks, that's the most intense. <laughs> that's where you get all of the information in terms of, you know, here's what you need to work on. And then as you continue through the course, that's when it becomes more habit. Okay? Okay. So you're kind of at that climax where you've had your brain might be being a little <laughs> bit on overload. <laughs> yeah. Maintaining and, and, all the no all the rules at one time, uh, no, uh, the mouth position, the intonation, linking. Yep. No, we forget uh, one thing. <laughs> Yep, so now it's let's apply those as much as possible and get them to be habit because that's the idea is we have to make sure that they're habit if you're going to use them in conversation, okay? Yeah, I thought uh, I'm good at linking, but now I came to know that I realized. <laughs> so, I think, I think so. in, in your conversation, as I'm listening to you just kind of speaking, I think you're really good at that linking. As you're, as you're reading out loud, Make, just concentrate on linking so that you can get more of that rhythm, you know, flowing just like you do in conversation. Because it's more natural in conversation to link than it mm -hmm. is reading. But when you're reading, that's when you're practicing the mouth movements and making sure that you're getting that into place. Um, does that make sense? 
<laughs> yeah, so you might be better at linking in conversation than you are in reading. <laughs> so it's just a matter of getting the reading kind of. Yeah, we had to too. go back and forth, you know. And yeah. Even I'm uh, doing seventh week, and sometimes I had to clarify my doubt to go to the third week or fourth week, like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going year and day and clarifying my doubts myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, all those videos. That's good. You're using the program exactly as it is intended, is that, you know, you move, keep moving forward, but you also, there's areas that each one of you are going to have an area that's like, oh, this TH sound is really difficult, or this R sound, I keep slipping back. So you do have to kind of pick a few of those that you have to keep reviewing yourself. Yes. All right, good. You're doing a great job, though, and, and you're on the right track, okay? Okay. Keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Rajani, uh, Rajani, you there? Oh, it looks like your microphone might not be connected. Um, oh, you're there. You are, Hi. Rajani. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so good to have you. Did you want to try um, some of this linking? Linking. Okay. Or did you have another question? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, I'm trouble. I'm facing trouble while pronouncing girl. Okay. All right. Let's go into that. That's actually a very common one uh, to struggle with because of that R and the L combination. So one thing, uh, with Johnny, is making sure that that R sound. What week of the program are you in right now? Now, I just finished third week, and I have to start fourth week. Okay, so that'll be actually a really good one for you, because in the fourth week, we go into the R sound, okay? So the R sound, you've already, you know, in, the, in week three, you've gone over L's. Now in week four is the R. So with the R sound, you're going to want to make sure that your tongue um, creates more of a smooth R instead of, instead of a rolled R, okay? So that okay. R needs to kind of settle down in the bottom of your throat and the it's the back of the tongue that comes up okay, okay. Um, so but let's still go over here so in week three you learned about the dark L right mm -hmm. yes yes um, so it, this one does have the dark L and it, so we have what we call a vocalic R followed by a dark L so grr do this for me grr grr Good. Grr. Good. Good. Okay, so your tongue's wanting to come up and go grr, grr, and come and tap the roof of your mouth, and you kind of have to control that tongue to stay down. Grr. Uh, grr. Yeah, perfect. Grr. Grr. Uh -huh. So as you control that tongue, it'll be easier to get into that dark L position. Because if your tongue's coming up and, and tapping the roof of your mouth, then it's difficult to get into that dark L, all, all position. So do all for me. Oh. Yeah, perfect. All. All. Oh. Good. So we're going to do grr, all. Grr, all. Yeah, okay. So when we break it up, you're able to get your mouth in those positions. So let's try and connect it. Girl. Girl. Mm -hmm. Girl. Girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you want to pull that tongue back, come up and touch that spine, it can be more of a light L where you touch your, your, your tongue to the roof of your mouth. That's fine. Girl. Girl. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so let me, let's put it in a sentence that... Mm -hmm. The girl is coming. Oops. Is coming. The girl is coming. The girl is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the girl is coming. And we can even get kind of the linking going on. Girl is. Girl is. Girl is coming. Girl is coming. Yeah. So sometimes that helps to kind of link that L as well. The girl is coming. So I think, yeah. 
the, I think the big thing for you is just controlling that R sound. And like I, like I said, when you get into next week, if your concentration is just keeping control of that R so that it doesn't come up and roll or tap the roof of your mouth, you're going to find a lot more success in a lot of these words that have R's, you know, and especially mm -hmm. L's. So yeah. do this one for me. World. World. Yeah. So as you keep that R controlled, that's going to be a lot more clear as well. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, good. So yeah, definitely concentrate on that R this week. Um, yeah. And I think that will be a big one for you. All right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Virginia. Okay, let me kind of go back to the questions here and make sure. I think I, uh, Deep Sea, I'm going to come back to you. I see your hand raised, but let me, actually, let's go ahead and, Deep Sea, are you there? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm probably pronouncing, I mean, pronouncing it, your name with uh, American sounds, but how, how do you pronounce your name? Deep Sea. Oh, okay, so it is with that yeah, TH same. sound, the, the, the TH sound. That's what I, I'm always confused. When I see TH in another, in someone's name, is it supposed to be a T or a TH? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, did you have a question or did you want to try something that we've been working yeah, on? Yeah, the, I have this same uh, doubt uh, for girl uh, and mm -hmm. word. And uh, I, now I have noticed, like, you're pronouncing girl is like girl. Sometimes I'm listening like G R I L. Girl is coming. Like I okay. notice, like you pronounce it the same. Okay, girl yeah, and grill. Like no. grill, like this. Like uh, like when like when I'm watching in movies or like that, I I have noticed like girl. The girl is coming. Girl, like. Maybe we used to say, like, we mute that R sound, we say girl. So when we are noticing, like, girl is coming. So what is the difference? Okay, so uh, the the way that you're saying it as far as the G-R, let's see, girl, girl, is that yeah. kind of how you're hearing it, girl? Yeah. Um, so that one, I don't, I don't, I'm not picking up on, um, when I hear other people saying it, it's more the grr, girl, with the, with the grr, what we have here, the grr, and then the ol sound right next to it, girl. So the girl is coming. Are you hearing kind of grill? Girl. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so the... Gur, it's kind of like a you know a bear gur gur gur. Um, it's the same as great, great gur. The beginning is going to be the same gur gur great. Yeah. Okay, but gur, and then we're gonna drop into that old girl girl girl. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, that's what you're kind of hearing, girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's right, that there is kind of just this grr, grr, just like you would have with great and girl, yeah. girl. Is that mm -hmm. same, grr and grr? Girl and great, grr, girl, great. Yeah, there's, yeah, you're right, there is, there's basically, it's this and this, grr, 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 there's a, in, in just the way it sounds, yeah. um, there's, yeah, it's very, very similar, if not exactly the same. Yeah, it is easy girl. to say, like, girl. <laughs> it's easy to say what? For, Do it again? Yeah, for, for us, like, girl is easy than uh, the second one, girl. <laughs> oh, okay. I've actually never thought about it that, that way, because there is a little bit of a dropping girl, 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 girl. <laughs> so say, say the, this sentence for me. The way it's, it feels na more natural to you. The girl is coming. Yeah, and as far as how I'm hearing it, it sounds the same as if I were to be saying it with this. Okay. okay? So I would say, yeah, go with, go with that. It sounds, it sounds the same to me. Okay. And then do this one for me. World. Okay, do it one more time. World. Uh-huh. So we live in a wonderful world. We live in a wonderful world. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so as long as, so the trick with the world one is as long as it doesn't have, we still, we still have to have that L, world, otherwise it sounds like word, word. Yeah. So that's the, that's the biggest trick with the word world is, is getting that dark L in there, world, world, and there's a little bit of a dropping there, world and word. So say those two words for me, world, word. Word, word. Okay, so pretty similar there. Let me let me hear a little bit more dropping. World. 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 Mm-hmm. World. World. Mm-hmm. So we could actually what a wonderful world and what a wonderful <laughs> word. So go ahead and say one of those for me and I'll tell you which one you're saying. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful word. Okay, so word, do that one, the second one again. What a wonderful word. What a wonderful word. Okay, and then do the first one. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful world. Mm -hmm. So just get a little bit more, another extra uh, in there. World. What a wonderful world. World. Mm -hmm. World. Yeah. So there's a little bit of like a hanging on it, a little bit more than the word, word. Word is kind of short. Word, 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 word. word. Okay. Word. And then world has a little bit more uh, to it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And good. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, also, the, in linking the first one, Oh, okay. You want to try that uh, yeah. worksheet there? Okay, let's go back over to, yeah, let's go over. Do you want to do Val to Val? The first one. Okay. Oh, the, Not Vowel to Vowel. The oh, the first, first one. one okay. is... uh -huh. yeah. No, I'm asking for cons consonant to Vowel. Oh, okay. Consonant to Vowel. All right, go ahead with number one. Sunshine is good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Can I go home early? Can I get a little bit more linking? Can I go home early? Can I go home early? Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. He wants to drive. Yep, good. Get out of my way. Mm -hmm. Her shoes are expensive. Good. Let's see it out. Let's okay, see it so out. There you go. Good. Let's see it out. Uh -huh. Do you want to go bowling? Good. And I love the intonation and the way that you're kind of moving through that sentence when you connect like that. Perfect. Number eight. I'm following you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Please pass the tissue. Uh-huh. Red is my favorite color. Mm -hmm. He likes playing outside. Good. You know, and you bring yes, up a good point. Outside. Yeah, so you bring up a good point that you're copying me as far as that intonation because that's how the videos are set up, right? You kind of repeat yeah. it and connect or, or follow that intonation. And that is, uh, that's kind of a subtle part of the program before you actually even get into some of the rules of rhythm is that as you're matching my rhythm, you're getting a better feel for how that American rhythm works. Okay, so when you, by the time you start learning the rules of rhythm, you've already been repeating me, and so it, it, you know, you already have a kind of an idea of how that rhythm is supposed to go. Um, so you're you're picking up on that definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Okay. Good questions. Do you have anything else? No. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Deepthi. Thank you. All right, good. Okay, I'm going to come back into the questions box and just make sure that we're hitting on. Okay, Kesh had a good question. Let me. All right. 
perfect. Okay, Akash, I'm gonna I'm gonna address your question here, and I'm gonna unmute you while I do this. So Akash was asking, um, I have a question in regard to linking. Um, I've heard native speakers speaking very fast. Is it because they say say things fast, or are they only stressing on important words and leave the rest unstressed? Um, so there, you know, so speaking of rhythm, so when we're talking about rhythm and just kind of give a little bit of a background with rhythm, is that rhythm, in the rhythm of English, we're stressing important words and kind of unstressing unimportant words, I guess, uh, over and over again. Um, and so the question is about fast speakers. When someone is speaking very fast, is it just that they are really unstressed, you know, they're stressing really the rest of the the unstressed words and only stressing on important words. Um, and there's a combination here because you can have somebody who speaks very quickly but is not stressing words very well. So if I talk really fast and I only have the same stress and I'm going to, you know, I'm, so yeah. there's people that can do that. It, they're really hard to understand because they're not doing that stress movement. I think people are easier, like even if they're speaking fast, if they're stressing important words, they're going to be easier to understand than someone who's just speaking fast and not stressing important words. Yeah. Um, so there's a level of like, okay, he's, they're both speaking quickly, but he's a little bit easier to understand than he is. <laughs> um, so there, there is a little bit of an element there. But basically, when someone's speaking very quickly, um, I've, I've watched a lot of those um, cop shows or the Law and Order or some of the criminal investigation shows that are on TV. It's almost like the script is just meant to be very, very fast. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so there... And even for me, as I'm listening to them, I'm, I'm thinking, I need to put on the captioning, you know, and, and because I'm not picking up on what they're saying. And a lot of that, when people are speaking fast, what happens is you really can't get the, your mouth in position for every single sound you're supposed to if you're speaking too quickly. And so there is a lot with fast, fast speakers that their mouth is just, they're dropping some sounds or they're, they're muffling through certain sounds that need to be more precisely pronounced for it to be very clear. Um, and so I think there, there is an element when, of people that are, that are speaking quickly. Um, if they're stressing important words, stressing means you do longer, longer, louder. So it's a little bit longer in the stress but they're not really doing that if they're speaking too quickly. They're not giving it the time. So I would say fast English speakers are probably not stressing as much as they should be on those important words okay. and giving that time. So I would say that, that the stress is something that they're missing um, and as well as giving time for their mouth to get into position for certain sounds. So because the, they're not giving enough time, there's some blending and some slurring happening with some sounds in English that then cause that to be even more difficult to understand. Yes. Okay. Because so like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because I've experienced this thing, like when I hear uh, English news, there's a very big difference. And like when I watch uh, TV shows or like any soap operas, there is a lot, a lot of difference that I can see. Like mm -hmm. the, I can understand more when I, when I watch news because mm -hmm. they are more consistent and they stress a lot, like on important words. And mm -hmm. TV shows are like, like on, they don't uh, bother to, you know, stress on important words. So it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's just like they're saying whatever they can, like without stressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you're exactly right. Is there's those two elements that are missing in some of those TV shows: stress and making sure their mouth's in the, you know, consistently in the right position. 
Whereas in a newscast, they're going to get both of those. They're stressing, they're really stressing. Newscasters always really stress and emphasize. And they're very deliberate in the way that they're placing their mouth so that they can get that clarity. Um, so that's a good example to us that if you're wanting really clear and accurate pronunciation, stress and be precise in your, in your movements. Yep. Yep, good point. Yep, I like that. All right, thanks, Akesh. All right, last question. Najin, I'm going to have it kind of come to you here. Najin is saying, and let me unmute you there, Najin. Yes. All right. Uh, so Najin is saying, uh, oh, you're wanting to kind of go through the other linking rules real quick, right? So let's go through some of these sen these constant to vowels uh, sentences for you. Okay. All right, go ahead here. Um, sun sunshine is good for you. Mm -hmm. So connect that a little bit more. Sunshine is good for you. Sunshine is good for you. Good. Next one. Can I go home early? Yes. Good. He wants to drive. Good. Get out of my way. Yep. Her shoes are expensive. Mm -hmm. Let's eat out. Okay, connect that a little bit more. Let's eat out. Let's eat out. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat out. There you go. And that T actually becomes, you know, tends to get a D pronunciation because of the tap T rule, right? It's surrounded by vowels. So when I'm saying it, let's eat out, eat out, I'm doing a D sound. You can do a T sound, it won't, you know, it won't be a problem, but. Um, all right, number seven. Do you want to go bowling? Good, so get that en ending ing, bowling. Bowling. There you go, so it's kind of in the back. If instead of bowling in the uh -huh. front, that ing is more in the back, bowling. Okay. Please pass the tissue. Good. Red is my favorite color. Yep. He likes playing outside. Mm -hmm. Playing outside. Playing outside. So there's that ing ending again. Is yeah. we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, instead of playing outside in the front, we're gonna do it in the back. Playing outside. So playing. you kind of you kind of jump off that g. Yeah. Playing outside. He likes playing outside. Playing outside. Better. Yeah, so, so connecting playing outside. Do that one again. Playing outside. Playing outside. Mm -hmm. So do I need to say like outside or outside? So it's almost like that G connects into that O. Playing outside. Because you have to jump off, jump off the G. To get into the O, playing outside, playing out. So do it again for me, the whole thing. He likes playing outside. Yeah, so, so yeah, just doing that a little bit more connected, playing outside. He likes playing outside. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, and then let's do constant to constant. Let's do the first five here. I want to come. Mm -hmm. He's had enough food. Good. I want some more. Good. She ate two grapes. Mm -hmm. My parents sold the car. Good. Okay. Yeah, very nice linking, very nice uh, rhythm there as you concentrate on that linking. Good. Yeah, so just keep practicing that. Keep kind of moving through that. I think that you're you're moving your mouth and getting that your mouth in position for those sounds really well. Just keep practicing that. Thank you. I have another question. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, um, I'm toward the end of the alumni course. Um, I'm on month ninth right now. Okay. Um, but in alumni course, you give more like lesson on how to learn. But could you please have more like 
um, practicing materials because we really want to learn from your pronunciation and intonation, you know, particularly words by words and sentence by sentences. So could you have more practice material going on past, you know, month 10 and so on for, for you know, longer learners? Okay, so, so are you thinking more in terms of having, having me reading material so that you can kind of copy and practice that or more lessons or what exactly? When you say um, more, more things to practice, is it like me going through a speech and, and kind of talking through it like we did with the Steve Jobs speech or th more things similar to what we had in alumni? Yes, yes. No, more I, I've, I value the lesson from week 1 to week 10, I would tell more than the, the, um, the general speech because that's what we missing, we lacking, you know, mm -hmm. like we are far away from giving a big speech. Okay. So, you know, we like to focus on um, sentences and uh, reading and make myself uh, clear. Okay, so kind of breaking it down more into like common phrases or common thing, you know, words or, or phrases that people might say and how you would connect that and, and use those those more common words. Yes. Uh -huh. and sentences. Um, yeah, in the, more in the format of uh, week one to week twelve. Okay. Yeah. So instead of the big big speeches, kind of breaking it down into more paragraphs that are um, that are are given I give an example and then you repeat them. Yes. Oh okay. That's good. That's good to know that that's 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 the help that you want beyond that. Okay. Yeah. So will you continue with um, past the month ten? So with, with the materials. alumni course, uh, with the alumni course, I'll have to give that some thought because I have the the whole year's worth of content and material, but mm -hmm. um, but being able to add just some of these daily practice. Um, things and kind of have that as a continuation of it. Um, let me kind of give that some thought as to how I could form that, format that um, in a way that kind of keeps you, you know, getting new, fresh, new material. Yeah. Yeah. Thank that's, you very much. That's some good input. I like that feedback to know what what's helpful for you, so I can know how to kind of format that for you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Najen. Okay. I'm just realizing the time. I always go over there, though. <laughs> so um, anyway, let's uh, let me go back to here. We'll kind of get into some of that. Um, some more of the questions that I had there were more things that were coming up in the comments section about linking. So if you're kind of curious about that, you can go into the, the comments after the linking lesson. We talk about, there was a good question about the ING endings and how to link, um, how, to, how to use those um, and, uh, and, you know, next webinar I can kind of address some of that as well. But glad we were able to get into your questions more and be able to have you try some things out and get some feedback. That's what I really like about these uh, these webinars is for you to get involved and get active um, and get your questions really answered here. So hopefully we're able to do that well for you. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to email me and um, and we'll address those either via email or the comment section or um, here in these webinars. Sometimes it's easier to do in the live web webinars. Um, so thank you so much for coming and uh, being here today. Remember, let's, let's first re learn the rules and then we can kind of start concentrating on how do we kind of manipulate those rules or common reductions or things of that nature. But once you kind of know where your mouth needs to be, what it needs to be doing and how, how English pronunciation fluency works, then we can get creative with it. All right, so thank you for coming today. And uh, everyone have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.